whole next NVIDIA narrative hangs on Navitas being absolutely vital to NVIDIA's future plans. They've kind of earned that nickname because their technology is being built directly into NVIDIA's next generation AI systems. It helps manage the huge power needs of AI. Navitas essentially sells the efficiency needed to make these giant AI installations work both physically and uh, financially. A mature semiconductor strategy, even if it causes some short-term pain. They're deliberately phasing out lower margin businesses think, like fast chargers for smartphones, consumer gadgets, and pouring resources into the high growth, high margin areas. That means AI, obviously, but also things like energy infrastructure, solar power inverters, that kind of thing, and high power industrial uses, electrification. It signals that leadership is chasing future growth, not just sticking with what worked yesterday. And that strategic bet paid off handsomely in the market, at least for a while. Before this recent dip after earnings, I mean, the stock was just on fire pure momentum. Oh, the rally was incredible. Staggering, really. NVTS went up over 700% from its 52-week low, which is down around $1.52, all the way up to a high of $17.79. A run like that tells you the market was fully buying into that grid-to-GPU narrative, completely validated it, at least in terms of price. And it wasn't just, you know, individual traders jumping in. We saw some serious institutional money backing this bull case, too. Very serious conviction. Institutions hold a big chunk of the float somewhere between, say, 39.7% and 42.3%. And look at Millennium Management, for example, right. a major hedge fund. Last quarter, they boosted their position by over 1,300%, 1,300%. That's what they call smart money, making a huge focused bet that this long-term AI story is the real deal, regardless of any uh, bumps in the road near term. Which brings us to the volatility. For some traders, especially the more aggressive ones, that volatility combined with the recent drop, mm -hmm. it actually becomes a reason to buy, doesn't it? The short squeeze potential looks massive. It definitely creates a potentially explosive setup. The short interest is exceptionally high figures, range from 24.6% to maybe 27.2% of the shares available to trade. Now, when you have a stock with both high conviction from buyers and a huge number of people betting against it, any surprisingly good news, or even just the stock bouncing off a key technical support level, it could force those short sellers to buy back shares quickly to limit their losses. That can ignite a really powerful rally, a short squeeze. So what's the, uh, the reality check we need here? The number one reality check, absolutely, is the unprofitability. Despite that huge stock run up, the company is fundamentally losing money. Bleeding red, as they say. If you look at the Q3 2025 financials, they reported a gap loss from operations of $19.4 million. That's the cost of making that big strategic pivot we talked about, plus all the R&D spending needed to scale up for AI in those industrial markets. They're choosing future growth over current profit, but it means they're burning through cash pretty fast. $19 million loss. And that loss looks even worse when you see what's happening with their actual sales, their revenue. Can you talk about the top line numbers? Because frankly, they look alarming. They really are. Q3 2025 revenue was reported at $10.1 million. Now you have to compare that to the same quarter last year, Q3 2024. Revenue then was $21.7 million. Wow, that's less than half. Exactly. More than a 50% drop year over year. It just starkly illustrates the immediate pain of walking away from those older, maybe more reliable consumer markets. They're definitely in a deep revenue trough right now, basically waiting and hoping that the AI and energy business ramps up fast enough to fill that, what, $11 million hole they just created in their sales? A bold strategy often needs risk, sure. But yeah. leaving $11 million in sales on the table while you're already losing nearly $20 million operationally, I mean, isn't that pivot itself the single biggest financial risk right now? It feels like burning the ships before you even see the new shore. And that's exactly why the valuation metrics look so stretched, so extreme. When you have unprofitability combined with shrinking revenue, even if it's temporary, those fundamental ratios like price to book just go kind of haywire. The PB ratio is estimated around 6.7 times book value right now for a company losing money and watching sales contract. That 6.7 number feels almost entirely built on hope and speculation. It means the market is pricing the stock as if that grid to GPU dream is guaranteed to happen and happen perfectly with basically no room for error or any delays. And Wall Street analysts, the professionals, they seem to notice this high valuation too. They sound a lot more cautious than the recent stock price suggested. They definitely do. If you look at the average one-year price target from analysts covering the stock, it's sitting around $8.21. That's quite a bit lower than where the stock is trading right now, which is $9.86. It shows the professional consensus thinks that huge 700% rally maybe got ahead of itself, discounting future growth too quickly. We even saw a notable downgrade recently. Rosenblatt Securities, a firm that follows semis closely, moved the rating from buy down to neutral right after the earnings. 
that signals pretty clear caution setting in. And finally, you just can't ignore the sheer riskiness, the volatility here, that sharp drop after earnings. It shows how quickly sentiment can flip on this name. The technical risk is significant, yeah. The stock closed down almost 6%, specifically managing at 5.74% the day after earnings were digested, November 5th. That confirmed strong selling pressure came in. But look at the beta metric. It's 3.0. That's incredibly high. It means, statistically, Navitas tends to move about three times as much as the overall market, both up and down. So if the S&P 500 drops 1%, you could reasonably expect NVTS to drop 3% or even more. If you're trading this, you have to accept that big, rapid losses aren't just a risk. They're kind of the norm for a stock this volatile and driven by strong opinions. So putting it all together, what does it mean for where the stock is trading right now? It really does feel like this ultimate battleground, doesn't it? Between that exciting NVIDIA-backed future potential and the cold, hard, immediate financial reality of losing $19 million a quarter on shrinking sales. That sums it up perfectly. NVTS is trading like a pure, high-conviction, speculative AI play. And this moment, right after earnings on November 6th, 2025, it's a major inflection point. The market is trying to decide right now if that long-term potential, the tech advantage, is compelling enough to look past the short-term financial pain and the, frankly, scary valuation metrics. Okay, so for you, the listener, trying to navigate this, trying to figure out who's winning this fight right now, we need to lay out the key price levels. Where's the immediate technical action focused? What are the lines in the sand? All right, so right after that earnings drop, you need to watch the immediate support level. Let's call it S1. That's in the range of $9.86, where it closed, down to maybe $9.92. If the stock opens below this area and just can't climb back above it, that confirms the post-earnings sellers are still in control. Strong pressure. But where's the real danger zone? The level that, if it breaks, suggests maybe the bears are right, the trap is springing, the point of no return, short term. That would be the must-hold support level, S2, which we see at $9.38. That one is critical. If the price drops below $9.38 and stays there, it would likely trigger more selling, maybe automated stop-loss orders. It could send the stock down towards those lower analyst targets we mentioned, around $8.21. Breaking $9.38 really validates the skepticism about the valuation. Okay, and flipping it around what price level would suggest this whole post-earnings dip was just a blip. Yeah. That the bulls and the institutional money are stepping back in. For that, you look at the pivot resistance, R1, up at $11.29. If NBTS can somehow push through $11.29 and importantly hold above it, that basically cancels out the negativity from the earnings report. It would likely scare some short sellers into covering, potentially kicking off that squeeze we talked about earlier. Got it. And one more level looking a bit longer term. What price needs to hold to keep that whole amazing 700% rally technically alive, even with this pullback? For the medium term trend, the key level is the ceiling of the prior long term channel, which sits around $8.90. That $8.90 mark is absolutely crucial. As long as the stock price stays above $8.90, the bigger technical picture still favors the bulls, despite all this recent choppiness. But uh, if it breaks below $8, then that'd be a major technical breakdown, signaling a full reversal and shifting the narrative much more firmly towards that total TORAP scenario.